Hey folks, welcome back to another HP Gaming Game Link video. It is time once again for the Halloween season, and this month we are going to be talking you through all sorts of weird and wonderful spooky things as we bring you our October edition of Got Your Backer. Welcome back. For those of you who don't know me, and you should by now, my name is Matt and I am the HP Gaming Master of all things gaming related. As you can see here, we are talking about Kickstarter and all of these wonderful things that have arrived through Kickstarter in our Gotcha Backer episode for 2020. I think this is our fourth episode, June, July, August, no, fifth episode, fifth episode, which is awesome. Uh, we are going to be talking through, for those of you who haven't watched this series before, uh, some stuff that we've backed recently with project updates. And we're also going to be talking about five uh, freshly backed items on our list for Kickstarter, uh, all things Kickstarter, I should say. Uh, as you can see here, all the games that are over here are our Kickstarter bits and pieces. Um, so there's, I mean, this isn't all of them, this is some of, uh, just to give you an idea of the Kickstarter stuff that we back. Um, should you back everything we back? I don't know, the decision is entirely yours. I am literally my own pair of eyes and my own opinion, uh, but by all means, take from that what you will. Uh, now let's get into it with some project updates. Okay, so the first project I'd like to update you on is an Australian game again. We had a couple of Australian ones on our list this month, which is fantastic to see some Australian designers getting involved. This one is Lost in Australia, and it's a game that is similar in style to or by the same designer from uh, Lost in Valhalla. And there's a new one that's just currently on Kickstarter called Lost in Jurassica as well, which is, as you expect, a Jurassic Park themed version of the same game. Lost in Australia pits players against one another, trying to find ways out of the outback, so to speak, uh, and using all manner of cards and creatures against one another uh, in brutal card combat uh, in order to complete their objectives. It's a very quick play time, about 25 to 30 minutes, and I think we're allowing one to five players, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but that expansion is actually, uh, sorry, that printing, I should say, is pretty much done and is ready to arrive on our doorstep, I think, as of January. So that's very exciting. And because it is an Australian uh, game or an Australian company that's produced it, uh, we look forward to supporting, obviously, our local talent moving forward. Uh, and with Spiel going on in Germany at the moment via digital, there's no better time to jump on board and see all the different things that our Australian developers are doing OS. Uh, and that's uh, Lost in Australia. Now we come to one that we're very excited about. I know that Charlotte is very, very keen to get this one to the table. This is Fossilus. Uh, now this one we've backed, uh, we mentioned a couple of uh, a couple of episodes ago. Um, the most amazing thing is that despite COVID, this one is already landed on shore and should be arriving within a few weeks' time, providing Australia Post is back up to full spec. Now that we are, yes, we are out of lockdown. <laughs> Um, we should be getting things a lot faster from OS and the rest of the world, uh, rest of the world and COVID permitting, and we do hope that everyone OS is coping as well as they can given the circumstances. Fossilist, for those of you who don't know, is a paleontological digging game where you dig through fossils, funnily enough, uh, to try and find bones. And obviously, the person who uh, develops the most, or finds the most bones and develops the best skeleton exhibit uh, wins the game. Um, looks fantastic. It is on shore. We will be unboxing that hopefully well and truly before Christmas. Amazing. Uh, so look out for that one when we unbox that one further on down the track. And next one I want to talk about is one we've talked about previously in another previous episode as well. Uh, this one is um, hasn't been affected by too many delays. The manufacturing process has been completed, which is fantastic, and they've gone into mass production uh, on ga the game called Canvas. Now, this is uh, Road to Infamy's um, uh, blank card crafting game, I guess. We have to make up artworks using transparent cards. Really love that mechanic. Uh, we've actually, I think, upgraded to the Deluxe Pledge as well, so we've got a few extra bits and pieces and components. This is the one that can hang on the wall. 
very very excited to get that one to the table at this stage it looks like everything's on track and they haven't uh, had any delays uh, but uh, without a doubt canvas is one of those games that we have played a print and play of and it is amazing uh, when it comes to australia i highly recommend you check it out if you are not watching this in australia welcome thank you uh, for watching um, at the same time check out canvas if you haven't already it promises to be an amazing experience if the print and play is anything to go by uh, we look forward to getting that to the table when it arrives okay uh, moving on now to a game we backed out of the blue this one sort of surprised us a little bit so we've we've mentioned this on on the show before and on the channel before uh, this one is called pitch and plaques and it's not a board game in the traditional sense it's more of a build your own miniature golf course and flick your ball around and try and get the lowest score literally hundreds of uh, different hole combinations you can put together obstacles volcanoes things like that it looks amazing was slated to arrive by christmas but unfortunately covid has caused a bit of a delay to this one we are still hopeful that it will get here before uh, the december or christmas uh, deadline but with the rest of the world um, suffering for, through the coronavirus pandemic obviously it makes things very very tricky so if we get it, great, we'll unbox it for you. Uh, if not, uh, you'll just have to wait a little bit longer like the rest of us, but that's Pitch and Plaques, and we look forward to getting that to the table when it arrives. And last but not least for our project updates for October 2020, we are very excited to once again talk about an Australian company presenting a game called Theatre in a Box. Now, I am a musical theatre aficionado. I have trod the boards on many an occasion. So when this one uh, activated on Kickstarter, launched on Kickstarter, I was a day one backer. Um, they struggled throughout the campaign. They nearly didn't make that funding goal. Uh, but then in the last, uh, I think it was eight hours or eight days of the campaign, uh, one of them, not sure which, uh, they plunged ahead, forged ahead, managed to meet the goal. Not only that, they smashed through some stretch goals in those final dying days as well, which was fantastic for them. Really, really successful campaign. Uh, these guys have gone into mass production and it looks like because they are an Australian-based company, they're going to be shipping before December, which is amazing. Uh, so we look forward to getting this one to the table. It won't suit everybody, uh, even though there is content for those people who are not um, theatre nerds or theatre geeks, I should say, or glee clubbers, for those of you not in Australia. Um, but it promises to have a lot of content, even so. So even though it might not be everyone's cup of tea, those of you that are theatre-based or into music in any capacity are going to love this one. The artwork is very cartoony and fantastic. There are tons and tons and tons of questions that come in the core box plus the expansions. When it hits mass production, hopefully it comes to retail, it's definitely worth checking out. And that's Theatre in a Box. And that takes care of all the project updates for October 2020. Let's get into some freshly backed stuff, which I'm really, really excited to talk about. Okay, so the first one I want to talk about that we have freshly backed is actually an expansion slash new game slash new content. It's a bit of everything rolled into one and it's actually an expansion for something that is sitting on the shelf over here. And it is an expansion to Dungeon Drop called Dungeon Drop Dropped Too Deep. This adds a plethora of content to an already great experience. Uh, if you haven't already checked out Dungeon Drop, you can check out the unboxing for it that we've done on the channel uh, earlier last uh, earlier this year. Um, Dungeon Drop is effectively, as an overview, is where you drop a lot of cubes into a small area and use those silver cubes that are in that box to make up rooms, to fight monsters, loot them, find treasures, find shields, all that sort of stuff. Whoever gets the most points wins. Um, Dungeon Drop Dropped Too Deep adds extra depth, there's a pun for you, uh, in terms of extra monsters, extra cards, races, classes, uh, more rule sets, better rules for solo mode, team mode, cooperative mode, all that sort of stuff. But they didn't stop there. The beauty of this with Phase Shift games is that they haven't just done the expansion for Drop Too Deep, which is about 19 bucks US, which is not bad for an expansion. They've actually created a brand new game in the same vein, story, and universe as Dungeon Drop as an after game, if you will, and it's called Tavern Tales. So you guys go down into the dungeon, you drop all the cubes, you have on this epic adventure, and then after you're done, you're exhausted, you want to wet your whistle, you go to the tavern and you boast and gloat about your feats inside the dungeon. So you play a game of Dungeon Drop and then you've got a secondary game back up which continues the story from where you left off. Uh, and whoever boasts the most and has the least amount of evidence to back up their adventures will win the game. 
Um, the fact that both of them come together in a bundle and are under 30 bucks US or something like that is just amazing. They also added in expansions for the superstructure, which allows for two playmats and walls to hold the cubes and stop them from bouncing everywhere. Really good marketing ploy. Uh, so we have got a, uh, we've backed the um, upgrade, uh, drop too deep, the Tavern Tales uh, expansion as well, standalone game, and then of course the superstructure along with a few extra add-ons too. And I'm very pleased to say they have reached one of their final stretch goals and they have unlocked the Cube Thulu which is a Cthulhu cube mini that you can use in the dungeon and battle your way to greatness. Uh, he's worth uh, some ridiculous amount of points, but he also does 10 damage as soon as you pick him up. And with most classes only being able to hold five damage, yeah, you'd be in big trouble if you came across cube Thulu in the dungeon. Looking forward to that one. I think it's meant to be for a June release next year. Uh, hopefully it'll be sooner than that, but we're looking forward to it when it arrives. And that's Dungeon Drop, Dropped Too Deep and Tavern Tales. Okay, our next uh, game that we have freshly backed is something I'm looking forward to playing with Charlotte and Blair as she gets older. And I think it's going to be something that a as a family we're going to get around and get behind quite a bit. This is a weird little game that at first I thought, oh, it looks a bit dodgy, but the components look amazing. Uh, and it just looks exceptional. And that is Kabuto Sumo. So this is a tabletop sumo battle with battling bugs that fight out each other and they fight against each other and try and knock each other out of the ring and knock each other out of the victory points, uh, four victory points, I should say. Beautiful components. Each of the different characters has their own unique tool they can use to push things around. Very much uh, old school uh, Ravensburger Labyrinth style in terms of pushing and pulling gameplay mechanics. But the fact that it's an elevated sumo ring and you can actually push things off and tumble them. Think of the, um, the coin games where you've got that shelf that pushes things on and off. Absolutely fantastic, very simple mechanic. Love the look, love the style of it. The art is amazing. Uh, Kabuto Sumo uh, is looking like it's gonna be something spectacular. So when that arrives, check it out. We'll be doing an unboxing and a playthrough for you when it arrives. Uh, but if you haven't already, um, is still running on Kickstarter. So by all means, get on board, just launched. Uh, that's Kabuto Sumo. Uh, if you are watching this in November, uh, then you need to jump on board and become one of our Patreons so you can jump on board and, and get uh, and get on the ground level, so to speak. Uh, but that's Kabuto Sumo, and we definitely think you should check that out. Ooh, okay, now getting into the games that I am super excited about, ones that we have backed uh, without hesitation. Uh, our friends over at Board Game Coffee, Mark and Brittany, demoed this one on their channel uh, as a bit of a preview, and I got maybe five minutes in before I went, yep, jump to the link, click back. It was that simple. I am a fan of deck building. I have never kept that a secret. Um, I love it when a deck builder goes that extra mile. There is another one coming out called Dune Imperium, uh, which is based on Dune, as in the, the Frank Herbert novel. Um, and it's a deck builder as well as worker placement. Like, amazing, amazing, amazing. This game is a deck builder at its core, but is a combat battle game as well. I'm talking about Twisted Fables. We're talking about some crazy women through fairy tale land getting absolutely twisted on their head, constructing a unique deck for each character, a ton of cards, some amazing, amazing artwork, and your own little player slate that tracks your weapons, armor, damage, health, all that sort of stuff in a beautiful inset for your artwork for your main hero card. It's just gonna be incredible. And some of the images you'll be seeing on screen here if they don't sell you on this game, there is nothing that will. The artwork is incredible. The base game, I think, has uh, six uh, different uh, fe uh, feminine or oh, female heroes to choose from because they're all female um, to choose from. Uh, the deluxe box, which I think is, there's no point in backing just the core as far as I'm concerned. You need to go deluxe and go all in. The price point is great for what it is and the amount of content you get, you get a 2v2 because at its core Twisted Fables is only a two, uh, one play, 1v1 game. You get the 2v2 player variant which allows for four players to play. You get the two expansions which allow for two extra heroes per expansion. So you get up to nine or is it 12 or something different people you can battle with which is just incredible. Uh, and there's the option to add on playmats and things as well. It just looks really slick. The artwork's great. I'm really excited about it. And not just the fact there's a deck builder, but I think that there's something to say about art in games. If the art is good, the game can be subpar because the art makes it uh, that much more of an experience. That's Twisted Fables. Check it out on Kickstarter. Do yourself a favour. You will not be disappointed.
Okay, a neat little game that I saw on Kickstarter and the more I researched it, the more I went, that's fantastic. I'm a little disappointed that not more people, more people haven't got behind this one. Uh, it looks like it may miss out on reaching its funding goal, which I think to the gaming community is a damn shame. Um, this is a bit of a party game that plays 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how quickly people can amass victory points. Uh, this is a game called That's a You Problem, and this is a game where you are trying to solve the world's problems, but at the same time hex and confuse and annihilate your opponents, where the best thing you can do to help them is just to leave them alone. Um, That's a You Problem boasts some simple art, some very simple mechanics, but a lot of take that action, which I love. I love the take that thing. Uh, and the fact that you can solve the world's problems, like you can solve hunger, by curing or using a deforestation card. That titillates me a little bit. I think that's quite funny. Uh, the fact that you can solve the world's problems with all sorts of weird and manner of things in your hands that aren't actually necessarily what you would use to solve those problems. Um, someone solved, in a playthrough I watched, someone solved terrorism. Someone solved terrorism with like um, global warming <laughs> or something like that. Uh, and you can use cards to solve other players' problems and things for them and gain their points. First at 15 points wins. Um, very simple, uh, very easy to play. Uh, looks like it'll be fantastic. And out of the box, can play up to eight players without even breaking a sweat. As few as two, as many as eight in one core box. And it's only like 30 bucks or something Australian on Kickstarter. Um, a no-brainer for me. Uh, I definitely think it's something worth looking at. It, there is still time if by the time you're watching this, um, not if you're watching it in November. If you're watching it in October, uh, there is still time to get on board for that one. It's definitely worth a look. Um, that's a you problem. Uh, it should be quite fantastic. And it will be an absolute shame, absolute shame if it doesn't go to print. So by all means, jump on board and help support a local indie developer. Uh, well, not local, international, I should say. Uh, but uh, a great game nonetheless. Looking forward to hopefully, hopefully helping that reach its funding target and getting that to the table. All right. We have saved the best for last. Now, Twisted Fables looks amazing, but this one here, I haven't played the original. This is a reprint uh, with new rules and everything else as well. And they've just developed a different backer tier, which I've upgraded to because I just thought I'm running out of space as it is. There's too many boxes in our cupboards. Uh, this is a game that requires dexterity. Oh, dexterity game. Some people hate the idea of having to get up out of a chair. For me, I love the board game experience. I've often been seen playing stuff on my kitchen bench rather than the table so I can stand and play and reach across and grab stuff and all the rest of it, particularly things like Arkham Horror, Marvel Champions, all those stuff, stuff like that. This game is a game that's going to get you up and moving around the table in hilarious ways. Uh, there is um, so many different experiences out of the core uh, big box that they've done for this game. Or you can just break it down and do small ones as well. It has since finished its campaign on Kickstarter and has mass a massive amount of bank. You'll see that on screen. This one is, of course, Dungeon Fighter from Horrible Guild. Now, this is a game where instead of just having the one core box in like the original edition, they've developed four different dungeons that you can crawl through and attack creatures in. And then, of course, they've also got the big, big, big box version, uh, which is all four games in the one box. Uh, not as many components, because obviously you have one, one set of components for all four games that are the same, and then all the different individual tools and tricks and things. But you will jump up off your chair and you will throw dice under your leg and bounce things off your head, make it bounce once, land on a target and then do damage. Hopefully, if you miss the target, you will suffer damage yourself from the monster you are trying to fight. But the fact that you are dexterously throwing dice, some of the dice are only two-sided coin-style dice. One of them you have to throw out of a goblet cup. There's an ice wall you've got to try and break down by hitting it with dice. There's a lava flow monster. There's all sorts of stuff. It's just crazy. There was a giant penguin monster you have to fight in one of the camp. The campaign for this one was amazing. Every day they led you through a dungeon and you got to turn left or right um, and add different tools and things. There's a thorny wall gate that you have to throw dice to from one of the forest boxes. There's a creepy ghost one with stalagmites that you have to avoid. The content of this game alone is epic. And I mean epic. The amount of gadgets and throwing gizmos and obstacles and things just for the just for one box let alone all four is huge it is going to be an absolute good time the best part about it is if you have one crew going through the um 
the 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 ghost box you can have another people another set of people going through the lava one so there's four dungeons you could effectively have a big party night where you're all taking on different dungeons it's going to be amazing and of course uh we sort of went all in and got the big box which has all four games in the one box um Yes, they are slated to make their delivery deadline. The pledge manager is just about to open. So if you are one of our Patreons and you want to get in on this at a baseline level and just get one of the four core boxes, hit us up and ask us because you'll have access to our pledge manager. You'll have access to all of our resources and you can get your copies well and truly before they hit retail. And that is only available for our Patreon subscribers. So if you are not one of those, you can jump on the address on screen and join up and you will be able to uh, reap the benefits including i am pleased to announce including express delivery on every order that you make as a free upgrade for a subscribe uh, as a thank you for our subscribers so if you subscribe to our patreon you will get game reward points to help get you discounts you will get a discount code that will give you 10 percent off your orders every month uh, for as long as you're subscribed uh, you also get upgrades to free express delivery within Australia as well, which is amazing. So by all means, jump on board our Patreon and support us. Uh, and that is pretty much it for all of the updates uh, for you for our Gotcha Backer for October 2020. We are super excited to see these games uh, come to the table. There is plenty more content. We do have one more video to go up for October, and it is a big one. Um, that we'll be putting up uh, later this uh, week. In fact, I think by the time this goes up, it might even be a day away. So uh, by all means, check back, keep checking the channel, click like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. And if you are one of our amazing Patreon supporters, thank you so much. If you decide to become one of our Patreon supporters, we love you. Thank you very much for your support. We really appreciate it. Uh, other than that, folks, we will see you back at the table for more fun and crazy adventures very, very soon. And until then... Bye for now.